Welcome back to episode 23 of our Mekong Delta trip in Vietnam. In the last episode, we showed you how we set foot on Phu Quoc Island and found our way to our resort. And in today's video, we're going to head north to explore this specimen of Europe. They made this place feel absolutely magical, like my childhood dreams are coming true. Eat seafood on a floating house at sea, scoot through Phu Quoc National Park to check out the views of the island from different angles, and venture around their biggest district to visit their must-see night market. It is so good. What's the difference between the green and the yellow? Along our fun journey, we're also going to tell you some important info about this only island city in Vietnam. So make sure you like the video and subscribe to our channel. Now let's go see what it has to offer. I knew we were gonna need to use our scooter a lot if we wanted to visit many places on the island. So deciding to bring it for a fee of 140,000 dong was a no-brainer. This fee was almost half our ferry ticket, but bringing it means we don't have to rent one for around 100,000 dong daily. We'll stay here for 10 days and could use the free bus tours of the resort, but we want to have more freedom, you know? Now to hit up all the spots Marty just mentioned in the north, we're gonna have to ride well over 152 kilometers. Seriously, 152 kilometers just to go around one part of the island? How big is this island anyway? Well, Phu Quoc itself is just slightly smaller than Singapore. Being nestled in the Gulf of Thailand, it has an area of about 589 square kilometers, while the figure of Singapore is 719. I know all this because like Maddie said in the previous episode, my family and I used to live here for 20 years before moving to the mainland in 2015. Back then, we never had any problems going around the island. But now, every single place that we go, I have to use my phone in order to use this GPS. That means it's so developed right now that I couldn't even recognize anything or any of the places or roads anymore. Since becoming a city in 2014, the island has been exponentially growing to serve as a special economic zone of Vietnam and a major tourist destination thanks to its scenic landscapes and proximity to other neighboring southeastern countries. You can tell that they're still working on expanding this area by the resort, so we have a lot of potential restaurants and other hotels here. They're still in the making, but it's gonna look amazing probably in a couple more years. There's an estimated 180,000 Vietnamese living here sprinkled across two towns and eight communes. And we're now going to a commune called Gang Zhou to visit Grand World, an entertainment and festival center. To get there, we have to go through Zung Dong, which is one of the two major towns on the island. The other one is called An Thuy, located in the south, and that's where we'll show you in our next episode. In order to get to Yung Dong, then you gotta go through this area. This area is just developed now, but on both sides of the roads, there are so, so many coffee shops, restaurants, hotels, and also resorts. So many activities, and during the day, it's not that vibrant, and it's not that colorful, because everything looks just normal as wherever you go in Vietnam. But at night, everything looks so stunning with all of the lighting, all of the colorful, you know, decorations and stuff. Mm. But then there's also a lot of drinking restaurants with fresh seafood filled with the tanks that you commonly see in this area. And there's also a pearl farm that we passed through that I think you are able to have like a tour to go through. I saw some tourists going through there a little bit earlier. So if you're interested in pearls, that might be a place to visit. So we're stopping by a very old looking restaurant in order to try out that delicacy dish or noodle soup bowl because they're gonna drop in some fresh or homemade fish cake in the bowl. The type of noodles she's making us is called bánh canh giá cá or fish cake noodles. These noodles are fat and a bit chewy. They are traditionally made from a combination of rice flour and tapioca starch, which gives them a distinct tenderness. Many restaurants make their own noodles to tailor and preserve the flavor of their soup. Although the bowl looks pretty simple and somewhat bland, 
The savory broth and these fish cake slices are what many patrons keep coming back for. This is awesome. <laughs> the fish cake is outstanding as it's so fresh and yummy. I really like how they make it a bit chewy without using sodium borate. Wow. That fish cake is really flavorful. It's not lacking anything, I feel like. The secret lies in the type of fish they choose, the grinding process, and a bit of tapioca starch. Highly recommended as it will give you a lot of bang for your buck. Just finished having a delicious lunch. Now, let's go. Woo! <laughs> Is it easy to ride the scooter here? Very much, <laughs> since people are not really that rushy. The only thing that I'm afraid of when riding a scooter here is dogs. Oh yeah. Because dogs, they don't care if you are on the road. They just come out, out of nowhere, like out of the blue. And if you don't know how to deal with it, you're gonna run over one of the dogs, and then you're gonna injure yourself and destroy your vehicle. The dogs are playing a game of chicken. After a 15 minute ride from the restaurant, we're here at Grand World. I think they just went general European. So we made it to Grand World. Along with Grand World, you can also see Vin Wonders and Vin Pearl Safari close to each other, making the north of the island more dynamic and appealing. These modern complexes showcasing a rich diversity in architecture and ambiance cater to a wide range of traveling preferences, making the island a versatile spot for various tourists. For our experience here on Fukuok, we're going to see a bit of everything. So we picked Grand World for its architectural marvels. Let's go see what it has. Man, this is quite a grand entrance. We got some extravagant music playing from the speakers and so many gorgeous things to see. <gasps> oh my God, you wanna go down this slide? It's a slide. You go. To, you climb to the top and you slide down. I'm gonna. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go down the slide. Fine. <laughs> and then it'll be your turn. Come on. Come on. Okay. Where's the slide? I think this is it. Found it. <laughs> what are you gonna do in here? I'm going down the slide, man. Oh. It's not just for children. It looks big enough for an adult. <laughs> Are you sure that you want to get into that dark tube? Heck yeah. Why not? Okay. I know I'm five years old. Okay, let's go. <laughs> not as grand as what I thought it would be. Whee! I'm stuck now. I think David was right. There's the end. I didn't get a finish. <laughs> Bunch of leaves. Okay. Oh wow, all of the statues that they have here are gorgeous. Here we've got rhino rock sculpture and an elephant. Now what I find the most beautiful and like eye-catching are these ones. Wow, look at it in all its glory. Yay! They made this place feel absolutely magical. Like my childhood dreams are coming true. Man, this place is so awesome. <laughs> I mean, it provides you with that kind of feeling that you are next to the beach, so you can literally see like all of the sea activities out there. <laughs> and then you can also see all the mountainous areas here. I just feel like they created this area and it's like perfect for anybody who visits this place. So not just foreigners or tourists, but locals as well who maybe don't want to travel as far or who can't even visit Europe. This place does give that general feel, that European vibe. And so far, even though we're just at the entrance, so far I feel like it is pretty stunning and I cannot wait to get on the inside. Do you know what that's called? Unicorn. Not quite. It's got wings. Unicorns don't have wings. A unicorn pegasus. A unicorn pegasus? Yeah, look at that. We got hula dancers. No, I'm kidding. Don't do the dip. <laughs> wow. They really just mashed a lot here in Grand World. Like, they've combined the European and, of course, some of the Vietnamese attractions as well. So everything's just mashed into one place. I kind of like that. And look at this whole structure. I think we can actually get inside of it. What do you think about this structure? I want to touch it. Let's go ahead and touch it. 
That's gonna be a lot of work. The beauty of Vietnamese cultural quintessence. I don't know what that word means, but the bamboo legend is an outstanding architectural work designed by Võ Trọng Nghĩa, a world-famous architect renowned for using bamboo and folk materials in his design. 32,000 bamboo trees were carefully selected from painting and brought to the legend square, creating this phenomenal work with a height of nearly 15 meters. This presence of this masterpiece at Grand Goral Phu Quoc contributes to bringing the beauty of the nation's heritage and identity closer to both locals and international visitors through three long-standing cultural symbols. The bamboo tree, the lotus, and the bronze drum. The outside structure is just there to hold these inner pieces and bring them all to that point up there. After looking at that legend, I can definitely see the drum structure. Okay, now that we're done with the bamboo structure, are you ready to go into miniature Europe? <laughs> Fukuok United Center. Wow. <laughs> They really went hard for the Venice vibe here, especially with like the boat taxis. Each boat has its own little structure at the very top. Let's see if they go under. Oh, even the people, <laughs> the boat <laughs> rowers will take your photo for you. That's where I belong. <laughs> Let's go to your cousins. They call this place a museum of teddy bears, as it has more than 500 stuffed bears here. I think the staff told me that it's in the top five biggest places for teddy bears in the world. But we decided not to get in because rather than taking photos, we didn't know what else to do as we didn't know much about the bears. So we went to the cafe and... Order from the uh, baristas. All right, how can I help you, ma'am? So one iced coffee with less milk, please. Oh, one iced coffee with less milk. Got it. All right, here's your coffee, ma'am. Thank you. Enjoy your coffee. I will. And have a nice day. Thank you, Mr. Teddy Bear. A memorabilia keychain. Oh, the, that is so cute. Look at it. It's like a bottle. But just know that because this place is touristy, you're going to get touristy prices too. So oh. for the iced coffee, usually you can get it for like, what, a dollar, dollar twenty-five. So that would come to around like 25,000. Here it's almost double. So it was 50,000. So we had to pay 100,000 for two coffees. Oh, that bridge looks like Peace Bridge in Calgary. It feels so good right now. It's so good. It's absolutely beautiful and worth visiting as a place here. I think I have to say like this place might be more lively at night right now. It's probably pretty dead because it's in the middle of the week mm -hmm. and midday, right? But I can only imagine what this place is gonna look like at night. They have a whole bunch of lights set up I can already see. And then I also heard that, well, saw on Google reviews that there's a light show that they have as well. I think this place is already developed to its maximum, but then I think it's not on that side of the spectrum just to build the place anymore, but actually to use it to attract more people so they could come. Yeah. So all of the corners of this whole area don't look that abandoned and empty and quiet anymore. Mm, I agree with that. Like they need to make sure that there is quite an influx of people because if there's no one else walking around, then it really does feel abandoned. There's only been like just a few other people going around, but I'm pretty sure some of them are delivery people. Not so much going on, but definitely in the future, I think it's gonna be very overcrowded and full of activity and also frenetic here. Yeah, I give it a few more years and it's gonna be pretty lively here. So for street vendors, it doesn't say anything. And then citizens on the road. Oh, hold on for a second, like street vendors. Why do we have like a lot of starting times over here? So they'll do it like in intervals or something or they do have like a bunch oh. of different shows. At Grand World, visitors can also immerse themselves in the rich tapestry of Vietnamese traditions through various kingdom activities. This small section consists of a few units that exhibit some traditional musical instruments, herbal medicine, and many other items, including dresses worn in the past.
win here, you can spectate a water puppet performance and a series of vibrant daytime events like the gate opening and changing of the guard ceremony, recreating the changing of the Imperial Guard ceremony in the ancient citadel. Additionally, the Doctoral Degree Award Ceremony is a fascinating reenactment of a historical Vietnamese event where the king awards the doctoral degree to the Val Victorian. Okay, I'm finding this pretty interesting even though I have no idea what's going on. Who's the guy in gold? That's the king. Oh. I really like how they have this whole performance going on to really paint the picture of like ancient times here in Vietnam because I have no background knowledge of this. So seeing a performance like this in person is actually fascinating. Yeah, it is. It's very interesting. Very realistic, right? Yeah. This whole place is such a blast for us, and <laughs> we are so happy because we came here. Man, everything looks a lot better <sighs> after being lit up. Even the water fountains have started up. To continue our adventure in the north of Phu Quoc Island, two days after Grand World, we headed to another commune called Ham Ning, known as a seafood paradise. But when we were almost there, it started to rain like mad. This is how it is after 10 minutes of rain. We had no choice but gotta stay here to wait it out before riding to this restaurant. After arriving at the place, we got here to choose our live seafood directly from the tanks. This unique dining experience near the beach with high quality seafood is what makes this commune famous. They're gonna grill it up for you. Ah, oh, grill it? Yeah. Whether you want to have it with some salt and pepper or a different, another different kind of sauce. Mussels, clams, hard shell snails. These are oysters. Really big, big clams. Wow, look at this, huge. Those ones were delicious. Yeah. We got a cuttlefish. Can I touch it? Yeah, sure, touch it. I can touch it? Oh, oh. oh. Squids. Oh, that's a gooey duck. This one is more expensive because it lives in that rocky environment uh, and one kilo is going to cost 550000 It's more expensive than that one. I think the meat of this one is better than that one because that one is living in a mossy environment. We're going to try two small-sized sea urchins. Okay. Okay? And they have to grill them all up for us. So we have a few delicacies here that we have to try. All right, so we have like two baskets over yeah. here. The first oh one God. that only has two already cut sea urchins. So we have two garlic snails, two rocky crabs, and then six hopping shrimps. All right. So one, two, Perfect. three, four. Four dishes. After choosing the all of the seafood, now it's our time to go onto one of these floating areas or cottages. I'd almost call it like a dock. I want to go to the far, far one. Look at that moving. Okay, you want to go up here? Yeah, why not? So they use all of the barrels in yeah. order to float the entire thing like this. Do you, want to, do you want to go over here? Yeah, I want to take this one. Okay. So the place we're in right now is called Ham Ning Pier. There are a few, you know, fishing villages sprinkled throughout the entire area. That bridge goes all the way out there in the morning. All of the fishing boats will approach that bridge and use it as a dock in order to deliver all the seafood that they just caught at sea. Ooh. And then people, all the citizens, especially of the wet market vendors, will come out here and pick up all of the seafood from all of the boats. So it literally is like the freshest you can get. Exactly. Wow. All right, so we have the first dish. Wow, perfect. So the first dish is of the two urchins, sea urchins that we picked earlier. All right, so the shell is pretty hard, so it's not difficult to scrape. I'm gonna try a small bite first, because I don't know how I'm gonna like it. I don't know how I feel about it. I think with the egg, like the egg is overpowering. Let's try just a little bite of the urchin itself. It's actually pretty good. The texture is pretty buttery, mm. right? It's soft and it does melt in your mouth. And the taste of it, I do like seafood. And I like that this isn't like overpowering fish taste. Cheers. <laughs> I just kind of realized like how messed up that was. Cheersing with a sea urchin. Like, yeah, here, we're gonna cheers with the body of a dead fish. Mm. Don't got anything to say for that? Something gave way so that we could enjoy the moment. Okay, I was worried about eating the sea urchin, but it's so good. Mm. 
Okay, let's try to dig them out. It's cooked in garlic, right? Mm-hmm. It's grilled in garlic. Oh, good. Okay. I got them all out. Dip it in there. Dip it here. Oh, a big mouthful of snails. Very delicious. The main body of the snail is so chewy, but then once you get to the body that's deeper inside the shell, it's so soft and like easy to bite through. And the flavor of it, it's perfect with the garlic and then the sauce. If you ever come here, don't be afraid to try this one. It is super good. From what I remember, the pink part in the tail, it tastes so good. It's almost similar to that of an egg sac and like a lobster or a crab. Mm. It's a very good, very rich too. That little pink part at the tail, that's my favorite. I save it for last. Mm -hmm. All of the greenish part, I think is just part of the egg sac. After scraping out all of the stuff inside of the shell, uh, look at this big scoop. <laughs> Someone's fully enjoying the experience. Yeah. Okay. Man. That food for lunch was absolutely amazing. And that whole meal was only 623,000 dong or 25 bucks. Okay, we're now heading to two different beaches to view the island from a different angle. The first one is called Thumb Beach and to get there, we'll have to ride through Fukuok National Park. Just lie and relax in the middle of the road like that. This national park accounts for 70% of Fukuok Island and it's a haven of natural beauty. Established in 2001, the park is distinguished by its diverse landscapes, which include tropical rainforests, mangroves, and coastal areas. It is home to over 470 species of plants and a rich array of wildlife, including mammals, birds, and marine species. Visitors can do various activities like trekking or simply scooting through this beautiful park like this. Seeming quiet and easy to ride, this road makes someone want to practice for a potential future driving test. Sorry. Okay, now I got it. Yeah, I shouldn't say anything, though I'm really concerned about the safety of everyone here. For a newbie, she got the hang of it pretty fast. After she practiced for one kilometer, I took back control and got us here. Just gonna go down here to see how beautiful the beach is. It's labeled as a homestay. A oh, homestay? Oh wow, it's lovely here. Bai Thơm, located on the serene northeastern coast of Fukuok Island, offers breathtaking panoramic views of the Gulf of Thailand and the lush, untouched landscapes of the island. We can see how shallow the waters near the beach are. People are just waiting in the water to set up their fishing nets down there. But not out there, because it's supposed to be very deep when the color of the water is dark like that. Oh, that one is not an island, but the mainland of Cambodia. The closest point between Fukuok Island and Cambodia's coast is about 15 kilometers. It feels very special to stand at a place where you can see the land of another country like this, you know? Now, I like this view, just looking out onto the calm waters, seeing all the fishing boats, and then Cambodia in the background. One day, one day we'll go over there and say hello. After relaxing at this beach for a bit, we hit up the road again to get to another one on the northwestern coast of the island. The commune it belongs to is actually the same one as Grand World, but from the east side, it is pretty difficult to go west as Google Maps was really confusing. After around 40 minutes, we managed to reach the beach just in time for the golden moment to see the sunset. Yeah, we rode across the north part for a long time just to see this, and we're not the only ones here. Not only this beach is known as a sunset spot, but the community here is pretty in its own way too. After this quick visit to this beautiful sort of peninsula, we're riding back to the town of Yungdom to eat our dinner and wander around. We allow Vietnamese people to travel with just a passport. The first spot we'll visit is Fukuok Night Market, located in the heart of Yungdom town. It's open daily from around 6 p.m. to 11.30 p.m. and is bustling around dinner time. With over 100 stalls, people come here to indulge in a wide variety of goods, ranging from fresh, diverse seafood served with unique sauces 
to street snacks like ice cream rolls and Vietnamese grilled bananas. The market also boasts a selection of souvenirs, including Phu Quoc pearls and other local specialties like dry squids and the cakes we're eating. What's the difference between the green and the yellow? Just the color? Just the color. Oh. So if you want to look for items to bring home for your loved ones, this is definitely a fantastic place to go for it. And the last spot we'll visit in this most crowded town is called Yingo. This place is also a prominent spot. Many visitors come for a spiritual and cultural landmark. Back when my family still lived on the island, this spot didn't have the pier that we're walking right now. And people came here for the temple at the top of the rock. But now with this cement path that leads out to the sea, this site can offer a serene and picturesque setting, perfectly serving as a check-in spot for tourists. We found it much more enjoyable to come here at night so that we can see the vibrant nightlife of the whole town too. Hey babe, now is the quiet time for us to keep our mouth shut and enjoy the fresh air coming in from the sea. Oh, wait, 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 wait. So you want me to be quiet? We're in the quiet place. In the next video, we're gonna head south to finally give you a complete picture of what Fukuok Island looks like. Although practicing riding the scooter is fun, it's nothing compared to all of the activities we do in this area. If you enjoyed our adventure in the north of this magnificent island, please give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel to continue following us throughout Vietnam. Thank you for watching and we'll see you in the next episode.